I'm here to do research. On? On my family history. I never met my father until I was 35. And my, my dad had four wives, including my mom. My mom had two husbands. I'm looking at my English family and their history from uh, during World War II. Well, they started out um, in Colorado, and um, I have traced them actually back to England. So it's like a mystery. I just see excitement of checking your family and learning about them. Like my grandfather, he could never remember anything about his parents because they died when he was um, very a baby, actually. My mother has always told me the stories of her family, and her oral history was very accurate. And I think it's really exciting to verify it with records. And so I was curious, and then it turns out this group in Boston called the New England Historic Genealogical 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 <laughs> Society. They've already done the work for me, those people. And uh, they sent me a chart to show uh, who I'm related to. And it's going to look like a joke, but it isn't. This is actually uh, from, uh, this is my genealogy. Bring it on out, Dave. Genealogy, or as I like to refer to it, family history, is the story of your ancestors. From you all the way back to the first immigrant ancestor, or even back further than that. I think it's important for us to, to know who we are and where we came from. And it's kind of exciting to know that I have ancestors who fought in the Revolutionary War. We all want to know where we come from and you know what our past is and, and part of that is we are who they were and they brought us to the point we are today and I think it's really important and we want to know who we're connected to. Researchers at the New England Historic Genealogical Society have been looking into the family trees of the candidates. Among their findings, Barack Obama is related to six U.S. presidents. His distant cousins include President Bush and his father, former President Bush, Presidents Ford, Lyndon, Johnson, Harry Truman, and James Madison. So it is a story, and you can put it together with facts and oral history and photographs to make this really rich tale of what your family is all about. By the mid-19th century, it was clear that America's records were beginning to disappear, and there had been no preservation movement to collect vital records or family records and house them in a repository or use them as a basis for providing scholarship. So this was an innovative idea. The mission of the New England Historic Genealogical Society is to collect, preserve, and interpret materials that document and make accessible the histories of families in America. And that was a vision laid out by our founders, including Charles Ewer, who really was an eminent far-seeing Bostonian. He and four other Bostonians came together in 1845 to found the first genealogical society in America, the first society of its kind in the Western world. He foresaw the need for Americans to preserve and celebrate their family history. For many people, starting their family history is, is something that they don't know what to do. They don't know where to start. They don't really know how to begin. Uh, they want to learn. They want to understand. They perhaps have a curiosity. Uh, the New England Historic Genealogical Society is a great place to start. It has a long tradition of not just serving professional historians and, and researchers. Um, and those people mix uh, in the reading room. They learn from each other. And so I, I think of it as uh, a resource that genuinely has a long history of being useful to the general public and open to the general public. We wouldn't have genealogy if we didn't have people who kept records hundreds of years ago. Uh, somebody decided that we needed to write down when people were born, uh, when they got married, when they were baptized, when they died, where they're buried, all the vital information that helps us to understand who these people were. The people who kept journals, bless them, thank you for keeping that journal so we knew who you were, what you were thinking. And it's all here at NEHGS.
The New England Historic Genealogical Society has always been a member organization. And in the beginning, it was, and still is, a bricks and mortar, a library, a place where human beings come and, in, and interact with one another. Any day here at, this, at the organization, one will find uh, in our library folks from all over America and from other, and, and from, uh, other places in the world. Some retired, some taking time off from work, some are young people who, who are here doing research, but also professional historians, professional scholars. The spirit and the enthusiasm of the staff at NEHGS is really one of the reasons that it's such a pleasure to go there. They know the contents of the library backwards and forwards, and they're incredibly helpful in getting a new researcher started finding their family history. One reason that people come to the society and seek out the staff is to make sure they haven't made mistakes in their own uh, family research, say, uh, to find out where one might go astray in tracing someone. And because of that, because of the care we've been able to take of members, we've been able to coach them through scholarship, through making sure that their sources are accurate, through making sure that the stories they tell can be passed down to future generations. What sets us apart from other organizations, perhaps, is our dedication to analysis, to interpreting material, to apply all the values of scholarship to family history, to treat it as a discipline that, like any other uh, scholarly pursuit, deserves full consideration of documents, original materials, we look for primary evidence. One of the great historical projects of our time has been the effort that the Historical Genealogical Society has made to document the great migration, that movement to Massachusetts, and then this huge outpouring across the continent. Uh, Robert Anderson has been just doing a brilliant job of, of piecing all of that together. Uh, between 1620 and 1640, uh, more than 20,000 people came from England to New England, and most of them uh, sailed right, at, right here into Boston, just down the hill here, a quarter of a mile, where Fannell Hall is now. Uh, those 20,000 people all came in a span of 20 years, from 1620, when the Mayflower came, until about 1640, when the Civil War broke out in England. Um, it's about 4,500 families and it has been estimated that of all the people who are in the 1790 census in New England, that's 160 years later, 95% trace their ancestry to the people who came in that 20-year period. Uh, there have been waves of immigration for different ethnic groups throughout the centuries, uh, beginning, of course, with England and, and rolling forth uh, the Irish, the Italians, the Poles, the Germans. Uh, each, in turn, has taken this uh, important step. And we take very seriously our role as the nation's genealogical society. We have sources for the South, the Mid-Atlantic, the West. Um, we have ledgers, account books, diaries, all kinds of family records, original materials. Uh, we have staff who are experts in English and Irish research, Canadian, uh, South American and Latin American research. We have reached out to an African American market. We have reached out to a Jewish market. Well, one of the great changes in America in the last generation has been the percentage of Hispanics that, that have entered the country and, and, and native-born Hispanics who now live in the United States. Native Americans were, were here long before we were. They kept their own records in their own way. One of the most important things we do at the Society is publish books, and we publish about 10 or 15 books a year, and we have a great team. We publish our journal, The Register. We have a member magazine, American Ancestors. But a great thing also is you can do this online at AmericanAncestors.org. You have the same kind of access to this information uh, just as you would if you came to the library here. Their website has grown and they did it very early. So people like me who don't live in New England can access the information, access the expertise and the catalog and the manuscripts without ever having to come to Boston. We've grown in the sophistication of our search tools and the services that we've offered. 
You can see documents that your relatives signed or wrote in their own hand. Census records, vital records, church records, probate records, and land records. Digitizing these records, bringing more and more records online. We've also rebuilt the website so that it's easier to use and has more functions, social networking features. We are very cognizant at Ancestry.com that uh, as uh, tenured as we think ourselves to be, uh, we're still the new guy and uh, NEHGS and, and others uh, have been doing this uh, for far longer than there ever was an internet. We remain very excited about the chance and ways that uh, companies like ours can work uh, with uh, NEHGS and, and want to try to continue to find ways to do so. The genealogical field has changed dramatically in the last 10 to 15 years. More than 100 educational programs around the country every year. We take members abroad, we offer tutorials, we have an online genealogist who every day works with members at a distance to provide clues or tips in how to do their family history. And we're very proud of the fact that the New England Historic Genealogical Society has had a leadership role in that change. Today, millions of people study their family history and so here we are in a graveyard where many famous people are buried. John Hancock, Paul Revere, and Samuel Adams. But this is an unsung hero in American history, someone whose founding of an organization has had a lasting and profound effect on Americans everywhere. There is a huge generation out there. They will be looking uh, in ever greater numbers uh, to their family histories. One of the things that I gave everybody for Christmas was the results of the research that I'd done last year. And to a child, they said it was the best Christmas present they got. The makeup of America is unique. People come from all over the world. And this past summer I visited Ireland and I, and I met my Irish relatives on both sides. Have, had never known them before. We need to begin to highlight all of the strengths of this society, often hidden strengths. Attention to immigrant populations, communities of color, searching for women in history. They helped me to do my own genealogy. I had the privilege to work across from them. They have the tools, they have the researchers, they have the access to this information, and they can help people do their own family research. To make that happen, we need societies, institutions, like the Historical and Genealogical Society. It is a treasure trove of our past.